Welcome, cookbook friends, to our new episode of Cookbook Divas, where we help you find your next favorite cookbook. I'm here with my co-host, Carrie, and today we're sharing our top picks for brand new cookbooks coming out the second week of August 2021. Carrie, what's your first cookbook you want to recommend today? Well, I am going to bring up a cookbook called British Cheese on Toast, Over 100 Recipes with Farmhouse Cheeses. Ooh. It's by Steve Parker. And now I'm super hungry for cheese, even though Katie and I just ate sushi. Yeah. (laughs) Some of the recipes include Waterloo with roasted cherries, Tunworth with roasted garlic, rosemary, and honey, Grandma Singleton's Lancashire Macaroni Cheese, Whoa. Applebee's Cheshire with apricots, old Winchester aubergine parmigiana. Mm. Now, some of us are worried that we can't find these specialty cheeses, but the book includes a handy guide to shops where artisan cheeses featured in the in the book can be bought, as well as tips on using supermarket and your own brand cheeses just in case. So, Oh, that's cool. That's a yeah. really handy thing. Yeah. That is British Cheese on Toast, Over 100 Recipes with Farmhouse Cheeses by Steve Parker. My next book is really cute. It's called Camping with Kids Cookbook. Fun and easy recipes for the whole family. This is by Amelia Mayer. It's all illustrated. It's specifically for kids like 6 to 12. Obviously, adults can use it too. But let me check through the table of contents here. So we learn about the joy of camping in Chapter 1. Chapter 2 is Camping Together. And then chapter three, we finally get into the recipes, so breakfast. Four is snacks, sides, soups, and sandwiches. And then we go into mains. And then chapter six is, of course, s'mores, desserts, and drinks. It's interesting they have measurement conversions in this book as well. I was I was actually surprised. Cool. I, I didn't think about that. but That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So you learn how to cook in nature, learn how to share, I guess, a family-style meal and camp simultaneously, and that's actually a foreign thing to me, even though I've camped many times. We always seem to, like, eat separate things, so I like that you're able to have, like, a big family meal. It provides outdoor activities that are great for kids and dinners and all kinds of cool stuff. This is fun. It's beautifully illustrated, and it's very informational. It's just really fun. So that is Camping with Kids Cookbook by Amelia Mayer. My next book is going to be very handy because I'm becoming a bit of a pantry food hoarder because of the pandemic. Uh oh. <laughs> this book is called Canned Quick and Easy Recipes That Get the Most Out of Tin Food by Chef Theo A. Michaels. It comes out August 10. It's by one of our favorite cookbook publishers, Ryland Peters and Small. Mm. And I love this because I just took inventory of my pantry yesterday and I discovered I only had two cans of refried beans, no cans of black beans. Which is so weird. I went to Costco and remedied that today. Yeah. But I probably have 15 cans of various diced or peeled or whatever tomatoes and tomato paste and some olives. What do I do with all of these? <laughs> so Theo's recipes make clever use of canned vegetables, fruits, legumes, fish, seafood, and even meat and poultry. I don't own any cans of meat in this house. Uh, he suggests trying a cannellini bean and artichoke gratin, mm. smoked seafood tagliatelle, chicken and mushroom lasagna bake, or a balsamic cherry tart to tan and more. Whoa. Whoa. I am tempted because I have a lot of canned foods. I have a lot of cannellini beans. You're going to have to find a cannellini bean recipe for sure. (laughs) And they're related close enough to garbanzo beans. You can make hummus out of them, but there's only so much hummus I can eat. Yeah. So the chapters in this book are canned know-how, small bites and sharers, soups and salads, skillets and stir fries, pasta noodles and rice, stews and curries, oven bakes, and sweet treats. Mm. I'm going to pick this up. It's called Canned Quick and Easy Recipes That Get the Most Out of Tinned Food by Theo A. Michaels. What's your next book? It is called Charcuteria, The Soul of Spain. This one's the second edition. Mm. This is by Jeffrey Weiss, Jose Andres, and Sergio Mora does the illustrations. There are a few illustrations in here. Uh, This comes out August 10th. And there are, I was very surprised, a hundred traditional Spanish recipes throughout this book. They provide, so a lot of the illustrations are the step-by-step instructions and... Sorry, Carrie. 
it does divide up like your meat section so it has illustrations of the animal and it divides up exactly what piece of meat each part of the animal is it's very educational i was i i was pleasantly surprised by this whole book so it talks about brines and percentages and sizes and weights of all the tiny ingredients you would need for a really awesome brine it talks about like i said the different cuts of meat how to actually process them and dry them yourself if you're that i mean if you're that savvy wow. and amazing wow. yeah there are uh, certain chapters in here that have the big recipes so like adobos so all of your sauces and that kind of thing it also has pate- pates in here which was that was a i didn't think that was a thing for um spanish charcuterie boards this is really fancy, like really interesting. If you are somebody that loves to put together these boards yourself, and I I honestly think this would be great for people who might be butchers or that kind of thing and want to explore wow. different kinds of cuisine, this is really, really cool mm-hmm. to pick up. So this is uh, Charcuteria, The Soul of Spain by Jeffrey Weiss. My next cookbook is the Essential Jewish Baking Cookbook. Mm. And I love baking, but not on a hot summer day. Yes. <laughs> it's 50 Traditional Recipes for Every Occasion by Beth A. Lee. And she writes that baking is an integral part of Jewish culture and traditions. Whether you're making challah for Shabbat, macaroons for Passover, or babka for family brunch, the Essential Jewish Baking Cookbook helps you capture the essence of traditional Jewish baking in your own kitchen. So inside this cookbook, you'll find your favorite book baked goods from bagels and bialis to rugelach, kugel, and more. An intro to Jewish baking, beginner-friendly recipes, yay! Mm, And I will peek at the contents if I can find them. Do we have any chapter lists? Ooh, beautiful photography. Oh, chapter one is the Jewish bakery intro. Chapter two, challah, babka, and breads. Chapter three, sweet and savory pastries. Chapter four, cookies and cakes. Chapter five, more treats and toppings. I am up for that. I'm definitely going to check this out. That's the Essential Jewish Baking Cookbook by Beth A. Lee. I think this next cookbook is one that you are really going to enjoy. It's called Everyday Entertaining, 110 Recipes for Going All Out When You're Staying In. Yes. It's by Elizabeth Van Laird. It is cool. So just the design of the book, it reminds me a little, it's like a little retro. It's got, I think, a 70s vibe. It's really bright and vibrant with the colors, and the font is just really funky and cool. So in the... It's cool. The table of contents we have in the beginning, alfresco golden hour. Oh, Then we yes. have boards and platters. Next is cheers. I love how long the cocktail hour is. It's very long and I dig <laughs> it. <laughs> we have cozy night in, date night at home. Oh, I love this. This is so cool. Uh, do you want me to bring a side? Tis the season, lazy brunch, and treat yourself. This is a really, really cool cookbook. It's very long. So like I said in the beginning, it's 110 recipes. They're very different and unique, and these would be really fun to bring to parties. So this one sounds really good to me for a lazy brunch if you get together with friends or stay at home. Chai spiced cinnamon rolls with espresso icing. Oh. There is, uh, I like having a lox bagel bar. I think that's a really good idea. I love bagels and lox. It's one of my favorite things. We have apple pecan tr- dressing for, um, if you were to do bring something like that for the holidays, Christmas season is coming up and Thanksgiving, you can dress your turkey or your ham with this awesome apple pecan thing. There is a lobster mac and cheese, which is classic and super tasty. A miso carbonara. That was an interesting addition to this. And then poke nachos. I uh, I love poke, so this was this se- it seems amazing. This is a really fun cookbook if you love entertaining or if you go to a lot of parties and you like to do like little potlucks and you want to bring something really fun and different. Super cool. So this is Everyday Entertaining 110 Recipes for Going All Out When You're Staying In. It's by Elizabeth Van Laird. That's why I like hosting at my house. Other people have to come over and I don't have to leave, except I do have to go to the grocery store to get supplies. But still. I'm like that too. I don't mind hosting because I don't want to leave either. (laughs) 
On the other hand, you can't just kick people out and some people never leave. So if I go to someone else's party and I'm done, I can just leave. Exactly. The pros and cons <sighs> for everything. <laughs> My next cookbook was originally published in 1990. So the paperback version is finally coming out on August 10, 2021. Ooh. It's Festive Ukrainian Cooking by Marta Pisetska Farley. And I'm really hoping they updated the photos on the inside because we like photos to look prettier now than they did in 1990. Yes. Cameras have improved. But anyway, it's University of Pittsburgh Press. And I thought I'd mention it if some of you are intrigued by Ukrainian cooking. It is meant to be more than just a cookbook. It's also a definitive account of traditional Ukrainian culture as perpetuated in family rituals and lovingly celebrated with elegantly prepared food and drink. I love that concept. Yeah. What's your next book? Well, my next book is The First Time Bread Baker, A Beginner's Guide to Baking Bread at Home. Ooh. This is by Emmanuel Haji Andrew, I believe is how you pronounce that. Comes out August 10th. Emmanuel actually studied with Gordon Ramsay, and mm. he currently does teach at a university, I believe, for bread baking specifically, which I think that's kind of cool being able to teach bread, just specifically bread all day. So if you want to learn how to make bread, this is definitely the person you're going to want to go to. So this is a total beginner's guide on making your basic breads. So that includes breakfast bakes, everyday loaves, and occasional treats. So a little savory and a little sweet. So let me see if I can come up with a few examples. One thing I'm noticing that I really enjoy about this particular book, I to be honest, with the cover, I was not expecting the inside to look so gr It looks great. The inside is awesome. There's photos that show you step-by-step -step instructions, and they're very clear. Like, sometimes I feel like they can be really small because they're trying to fit in so much in a yeah. book. This is pretty basic and very clear with all the step-by-step -step progression pictures, and the photography and inside is just gorgeous. I like it. So an example of a recipe we have in here is half and half sourdough loaf. They have a uh, muesli bread. That looks really good with honey. Super tasty. And let's see, we have a, he has a 60 minute soda bread recipe, which I was very surprised at. If you've never made bread before, and I missed the whole bread trend last year. I did too. I couldn't find flour and then I got lazy and watched Netflix instead. Yep, me too. So I really want to try to make my own bread this year. I think it would be worth it. And I know that once you get in the habit of doing it, it's really not that bad from what I've heard. And it's better than store-bought bread. So this sounds amazing. So that is the First Time Bread Baker, A Beginner's Guide to Baking Bread at Home by Emmanuel Haji Andrew. My next book I will never need to use, but I'm going to read it for you guys. It's the Five Ingredient Camping Cookbook. Ooh! <laughs> Easy, flavorful recipes for eating well in the great outdoors. I love eating the outdoors and my backyard, not involving <laughs> camping. Oh, that's fair. That's With fair. my bathroom nearby. The book is by Pauline Reynolds Nuttall. Inside, the contents are Chapter 1, Five Ingredient Camping, Chapter 2, Breakfast, then Sandwiches and Salads, Mains, then Snacks and Sides, and Desserts and Drinks. It seems like everyone that goes camping wants to drink, and I can yes. only imagine why. Right, yep. <laughs> there are 75 recipes, and they're meant to work whether you're camping in your car, your RV, or a tent. There's an intro to camp cooking. You can learn everything you need to know for successful campground cooking, including suggestions for stocking your portable pantry, tips for staying safe, ways to optimize storage space. And I don't see any mention of how to protect your food from bears. That should probably be in there. And five ingredient meals. I do love that idea because you're not bringing too much stuff with you because packing is the worst part of camping other than yeah, not having a bathroom I do and laying on the ground. <laughs> That is The Five Ingredient Camping Cookbook by Pauline Reynolds Nuttall. This next one I'm really excited about, especially after you told me you have an ice cream maker. It I do. is called <laughs> Jalupo Gelato, a delectable palette of ice cream recipes. It comes out August 10th. It's by Jacob Kennedy. And it is really pretty and fun. I'm very excited. So I love that I'm seeing the first thing I'm seeing on here is it's almost like a, a color chart with all of these like circles and it, mm. it looks like in a color palette 
but it's a whole list of all of the gelato recipes you will find. So there's a whole spectrum of like this orange to red uh, palette here, and you have like strawberry granita, wild strawberry sh sorbet, strawberry shortcake, semi frito. I don't think I've heard of that before. Semi freddo. They have a watermelon granita. Oh my goodness, there's so many things in here. Cherry and sambuca granita. Wow. And then we go on to like browns and blacks and they have like espresso, chocolate and grappa, chocolate tea and biscuits. And so, and those are the actual recipes throughout the book. They give you all of the page numbers underneath the little color palette. It's really cute how they've done this. It actually does look like a little color palette with all the names of the gelato recipes and the page numbers there. It's really cool. You also get to learn specifically, like, what is gelato. I actually, to be perfectly honest, I know it's Italian, but I don't know what specifically makes gelato different. So It's I just heaven in your bowl is all I can say. Okay. Well, I want to learn how to make heaven in my bowl personally, and especially if there's an ice cream maker involved to make my life easier. So if you want to check that out, if you love making ice, this would have been awesome in the beginning of summer. But I guess you can probably have this all year lo long if it's heaven in a bowl. So that's Jalupo Gelato, a delectable palette of ice cream recipes by Jacob Kennedy. What's next? I'm going to read about this for you, even though I'm vegetarian. Yeah. Many of you are going to enjoy hearing about the new pig cooking with a passion for pork cookbook. <laughs> the author is Johnny Mountain. The publisher is Nourish. And they write that pork is healthy, inexpensive, and versatile. Yet this succulent meat is tricky to cook, and achieving the perfect crackling is even harder. Mm. In Pig, charismatic chef Johnny Mountain shares his pork preparation secrets in more than 100 delicious recipes, such as grilled garlic and sage pork chops, mm. and pork loin in a fennel salt crust. He mm. explains the different cuts of meat and how to smoke, preserve, and cure, plus offers smartphone links to instructional videos. Ooh, that is that's pig. awesome. Yeah. Cooking with a Passion for Pork by Johnny Mountain. That could be a good Father's Day gift or dude birthday gift, maybe. <laughs> I really like that some of the newer cookbooks are starting to come with the little scanners so you can get in, like actual videos. It makes as things... As long as they keep their links updated. Right. On the yes. back end. <laughs> that is very true. My next book, I'm... I'm oddly excited about. It's called Sheet Cake, Easy One Pan Recipes for Every Day and Every Occasion, a baking cookbook. This is by Abigail Johnson Dodge. It comes out August 17th. This is, I, I, so I would love to be an elaborate baker. It's a dream of mine, but it does take time and it takes space and dishes. And I personally would rather just deal with one, sh one sheet cake, but I like what they've done here because they've made a cookbook where you you do learn the classic sheet cake but she teaches you how to like stack them you can roll your sheet cakes you can also mm. kind of turn your sheet cake really into a crazy masterpiece and no one would even know it's just a sheet cake because you've made it just and it's only one pan so this just seems too good to be true, but I'm going to give it a chance. Let's read through the table of contents because this is really cool. The photography is beautiful. I, the cakes just look phenomenal in here. So she starts off with classic cakes. Then she moves on into stacked cakes. Then rolled cakes. Frostings and fillings. Then soaks, glazes, sauces, and accompaniments. Oh. Yeah, it's quite elaborate. And... I guess, like, when I look at it, I would not have, I wouldn't realize, like, any of these photos would just be from one sheet cake pan, but they are. That's what she guarantees, at least, is that all of these cakes she's made are all using a sheet cake pan, and I was like, no way. But she uses a mixing bowl, too, right? You're not, like, sure. stirring on the pan. Okay, just check. Yes, <laughs> I mean, that sure. would be, oh, wow, that would be awesome, too. Like, no <laughs> dish, anything. That would be awesome. So she does go through the basics, like, things that you might need, basic cake-making procedures, how much you sh should stir, and normal ingredients you would use. She does provide another thing that I'm noticing is kind of trendy, too, is cake croutons. What? So she talks about, yeah, so, like, I've noticed that a lot of birthday cakes now, you have your confetti 
birthday cake with the amazing frosting, funfetti frosting. But then they have like these little cake croutons that they place on top of the cake. It's basically like another cake on top of your frosted cake. Wow. <laughs> it's cute, but it's a lot of work, I feel like. So I like what she's done here. She talks about how to store things and timing, potentially freezing them. It's a really cool cookbook. So she's got a chai mango cake, a uh, white chocolate coconut cake. She's provided also a cinnamon apple upside downer cake and then a pretzel crusted caramel vanilla cheesecake. Wow. Whoa. Lots of good stuff in here. I want to make that. Yeah. So that's sheet cake, easy one pan recipes for every day and every occasion, a baking book by Abigail Johnson Dodge. I have three more cookbooks to talk about. And this one is called Cecilia, a love letter to the food of Sicily by Ben Tisch. It's a love letter to one of the oldest, most richly varied food cultures of Europe. He says that Sicily is a frugal peasant land with a simple cuisine, and yet it's full of ornate glamour and extravagance. Mm. It's sitting at the heart of the Mediterranean between East and West, Europe and North Africa. But the food of Sicily is full of citrus, almonds, and a plethora of spices. You'll find the most delicious fresh seafood on the coast and mouth-watering meat in land, but the two rarely mix. I'm very curious. I like Italian food. I'm not sure if I know about Sicilian food. Yeah, me either. And we don't really have any Sicilian restaurants that I know of here in Seattle, and I don't know why we don't. We usually have, like, Sicilian dishes, well, allegedly a Sicilian yeah. dishes at Italian restaurants, but That's never true. anything like, specifically Sicilian restaurant. Yeah. I can't see the table of contents, so that's all I know about this book. It's supposedly stunningly photographed, and some of the recipes are smoky artichokes with lemon and garlic, roasted pork belly with fennel and sticky quinces, a bitter chocolate tort, and limoncello semifredo. Sounds mm, good. Yeah. That is Cecilia, A Love Letter to the Food of Sicily by Ben Tisch. Next up is Southern Grit, 100 plus down home recipes for the modern cook. It comes out August 10th. This is by Kelsey Barnard Clark. She was one of the Top Chef winners, She, uh, I believe 2016. And these are very, I mean, as the title kind of alludes to, it's mostly Southern recipes. She also provides hospitality tips throughout this cookbook, which I thought was pretty fun. And I really like this cookbook. So I've never had the opportunity to have, I mean, I've had the opportunity, but I haven't indulged in Southern cuisine as much as I would like to. I think I I just really want to do it. It looks super indulgent and really good. And I'm really excited about this cookbook. So she, in her chapters, she has happy hour bites and sips. And then she has greens, and there's quite a bit of greens in here. So a few examples of the greens you would find. She has different versions of slaws you can make, different kinds of street corn. She has something called a tomato pie. Oh, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, so at least you understand. And then she has these okra hot fries, and I was like, oh. That sounds amazing. That's basically the only way anyone actually likes okra is fried, right? (laughs) We're not eating them straight out of the ground. Yum. That sounds so good. And then her next chapter is potatoes, grains, and pasta. Again, delicious. Uh, The next chapter is seafood. Then she goes on to eggs and poultry. And then pork and beef is next. And then finally, she's got breads and pastries at the very end. So I like that she's combined her sweet and savory bakes all together. I think that's actually a smart idea. This is a really fun, cool cookbook. The photography is gorgeous. I like how she talks about having a well-stocked Southern pantry and what that means. Bacon's the first thing on there. (laughs) Of course it is. (laughs) Yeah, I was like, How would you get by life without that? I know. I was like a woman after my heart. Uh, She's got a whole bunch of cool things in here, though, including like Duke's mayonnaise, field peas, uh, fresh herbs, grits, that kind of thing. Um, And these are a little foreign, I guess, to, you know, since I'm from the Pacific Northwest, these are not food, like, even though it's all American, I'm not exposed to it as, as much, so it seems very adventurous to me. So I'm really excited about this cookbook. It looks really good. So that's Southern Grit, 100 plus down home recipes for the modern cook. This is by Kelsey Bernard Clark. 
My final major cookbook is called Vegan Baking Made Easy, 60 Foolproof Plant-Based Recipes by Rebecca Coleman. It's a simple little paperback from Rockridge Press. She wants to help you learn how to make baking simple. Almost every recipe uses no more than 10 ingredients, requires just one bowl, or takes less than one hour to make. Perfect. Mm. She sets you up for success. You're going to learn the secrets to perfecting each recipe without eggs and dairy and find out how to also adapt them to be nut-free or gluten-free. <gasps> Ooh, yay. And she mentions the vegan kitchen and teaches you how to stock a pantry and equip, equip a kitchen for vegan baking with a rundown of ingredients and essential tools. I'm guessing coconut and coconut oil and almond flour? Probably, <laughs> I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. She teaches you to bake up a bounty of cookies, cakes, pies, and more. Mm. And I'm going to take a quick peek. Oh, cute little photos. Yeah, this is just a nice, simple little cookbook. The first chapter is baking vegan without the fuss. The second chapter is cookies, brownies, and bars, and then cakes and quick breads, pies, tarts, and pastries. And finally, savory treats and breads. I like savory baking. Yeah, me too. So that is Vegan Baking Made Easy by Rebecca Coleman. And before we go, I wanted to mention a cute little book that's coming out on August 10 by Orange Hippo, one of our favorite little publishers. Mm. It's The Little Book of One Pot. Flavorful oh, words of wit and wisdom. Don't know anything about it. It's really tiny. And Katie, you had one on, on your list too. Yeah, mine's the little book of tapas. It's tasty oh. tidbits of wit and wisdom. <laughs> oh, I want to check these out. <laughs> yeah, they're really cute. I like it. Oh, well, thank you for listening to this episode of the Cookbook Divas podcast. You can hear more of our upcoming cookbook news on our podcasts that come out on Tuesdays and Fridays. And we would love to ask you to stop by Apple Podcasts and drop us a rating and review. And be sure to say hi to us on Facebook at Cookbook Divas. We are posting constantly. We're also posting reels on Instagram, pictures of our cookbook hauls from the library. And you can see our cookbook reviews and look-throughs on Facebook and on YouTube. Have a great week, and I can't wait to hear what cookbooks you're looking through as well. <laughs>